In this video, I'm gonna show you the single mental shift that you need to take if you wanna become an expert in the content automation space using technology to help you scale your content production and your distribution in the digital age. Now, I know a lot of people already understand the concept of content repurposing, taking long form video and repurposing that into short vertical clips, repurposing transcripts into text posts and then taking text posts and converting those into Twitter style carousels and all of that. But in this video, I want to show you how you can make a mental shift shift in terms of how you actually store this content from a technical perspective if you're using a tool like Airtable, which is really a spreadsheet on steroids. It's how I organize all my content. It's a product that I've built called the Content Engine. And what I wanna highlight is how can you advance the way you think in terms of how you store this content to allow you to take advantage of all of the really cool technology that's coming out around content automation, chat GPT, all of the tools that allow you to connect through APIs. You can send videos, you can have them repurposed, you can use chat GPT. You can have it write blogs from videos. If you're not structured properly, then you're going to limit your ability to use all of the new content automation tools. So that's what I want to talk a bit about today so that you can get a leg up on the competition. Now, I recently did another video which broke down my overall content workflow to help me create and produce 100 plus pieces of content per week. And I spent a bunch of time talking about the pool of written content that I create, which allows me to really create a feedback loop and create a lot of extra content, text posts, carousels, images, cover art, for vertical videos and that sort of thing. So if you wanna check out that video, I've linked it in the description below, but let's go ahead and talk more about the technical side of managing all of this content. So before we get into that, it is important to mention that I'm a software engineer by trade. Before I got into content, I was developing software for large corporations, for Apple, for lots of startups in the Bay Area. And so I have a lot of experience in terms of how to think through the technical structure for applications. And so that's kind of where I came into this space. I saw how every Everything was getting done. And so I started to think, how should we structure the way we think about this? How should we actually build out the databases so that we can scale effectively? And so my technical background is how I've been able to innovate in this particular space. So really, this is really the old way that people think. We have a YouTube video that contains a video, image, a thumbnail, copy, a description, and a title. Or we have a TikTok that has video and copy. It might have a cover art. But again, people are thinking of content in this perspective. And I know a lot of people understand that they can repurpose this content to other formats. But what I'm advocating here is that you really start to think in a new way, which is really a content pool, and that each of these different types of content that you're creating are actually individual pieces of content that should be stored in a more linear format so that it can be repurposed in a much more effective way. So if you think about it, if you create a new video, we can create a transcription. That transcription itself is a piece of content that can be used. That might be used for research. It might actually be something that you actually want to store and keep track of. And that transcript can help you create titles. And that title could be used for a YouTube video, but this title could be used for any number of other pieces of content. And that transcript could also be used for copy. And that copy could be transformed into other pieces of content as well. And so when you start to think of your content more linearly, where each piece of content that you create is stored individually, then you can start to think more in terms of bundles and then just using that content to bundle up into other forms of content that you would actually post. So I know this seems subtle, but what I'm advocating for here is that when we think about content, we're really just thinking about these individual pieces of content that are created. And instead of thinking about posting content, we're actually posting bundles of content. So what that's gonna do is that it's gonna take our creation process where we create all these individual pieces of content, and we're gonna have all of that raw media, but we're gonna start to store all of that content individually in our content pool so that we have access to it to then create different bundles. We can arrange all of this content content in different ways, and we can actually transform it using these transformation chains to create additional pieces of content. So let's take a raw video as an example here. We could create a transformation chain that takes that raw video and it creates a transcript. We can use AI to clean that up, and then we can send that to a writer who then creates the copy. And now this new piece of copy that we have created is going to be another piece of content that is stored in our content pool. So you can see here that our content pool is starting to get larger as we go through all these different transformations and we can continue to reuse any of these individual pieces of content to create new bundles and continue to expand and scale from there. So this concept of a transformation chain is important because this same video could also go to an editor, which is then the actual video that is sent to TikTok. And then that video becomes another piece of content 
that is in our content pool. And now what you're gonna see is that then we can then take this content and we can start to construct new content for other platforms like LinkedIn. We can create a new bundle where we take copy that we've already created. We can use some AI to convert it or do some sort of transformation. Again, we can send it to a writer to clean it up and to finalize it. And then that becomes a new piece of copy that can then be added to our content pool. And again, you can see that our content pool is gonna to continue to get larger. And we're gonna have all of these individual pieces of content here that we can reuse. And then we might take that copy, we could send it to a designer, and then that designer could create a unique image from that original copy. So you can see here that from a technical perspective, I'm setting ourselves up so that we can reuse the copy, create these different transformation chains that are using a combination of AI or actual people like editors and writers to create great content, to create new bundles, and to continue to transform the content for new platforms and really use it to its maximum ability. And then of course, along the way, we're always adding in new raw media that we've recorded from our creation process, and that's getting added to the content pool. And so you can see that that content pool is continuing to get larger and larger. We can continue to send it into different transformational changes where the video is sent to AI. It's creating new videos. We're creating additional copy, and then we're creating new content for YouTube as a bundle created from new original content, but also potentially from content that already existed in the content pool. And then again, as all of these new pieces of content are created from the different transformations that we're running, we're continuing to add to that content pool, which is just going to get larger and larger and larger. And then we can continue the process of repurposing content, transforming it, editing it, using AI, and then also building out our content pool further. So not only is it very powerful to store and think about all of your content as a unique piece of content that we can put through these different transformational changes to create new bundles, which can be distributed to new platforms. But it's also really interesting from an analytics point of view, because now we can actually track analytics for each individual piece of content. So typically we're getting analytics for how did the YouTube video as a whole do? How many views did it get? What was the view duration? But now what we're gonna be able to do is we're actually gonna be able to attribute the analytics to individual pieces of content. So after we create a YouTube video, we have a bundle for that. We have copy, title, and video associated with that. We can then associate the analytics to each of those individual pieces of content. And as we create new bundles, we can create a LinkedIn video. Now we can post that and get the statistics for how did that video do on LinkedIn? How did the copy perform on LinkedIn? And so we can start to actually break down the analytics per platform, per piece of content to ultimately then continue to build out new bundles and reuse content that is best performing. We can even take a title that was working well on YouTube, and then we can use that title on Facebook and see how it performs on Facebook. So we can get this really interesting perspective where for every single piece of content for each piece of copy for each title, we can see how it's individually performing on all of these different platforms. So again, the main thing that I'm trying to advocate for here is that as we start to create content, really start to think about how can you structure your content system to store and analyze and reuse all of this content individually? How can you set it up so that that's easy? How can you set it up so that as you are transforming this content, you can take a video and put it through a transformation pipeline that will actually convert it and then you can store it and reuse it. And then how are you actually storing and tagging this content so that this process that I'm talking about is actually feasible, right? So as you grow and as you get all of this content and as your content pool grows, the main challenge that you're gonna have now is that there's so much content. How are we storing it so we can actually search, pull that back up and actually create these bundles without that being overwhelming? So that's really the problems that I'm solving here in the Content Engine database is how do we store this content so that we can actually take advantage of all of this content in the most unique and most creative way and repurpose it, transform it, and even analyze it in a way that was never possible before. So I hope you found that video valuable. I know some of these concepts are a little bit hard to understand. I'm coming from a technical background. So if you have any questions, make sure to drop them below so that I can help out. I can make better videos. I'm trying to describe these as best as I can and make it as valuable as I can. And I know it's a little bit confusing. So any feedback from you would be very helpful. If you're interested in learning about how to build out the content workflow that I was talking about before, where I break down the overall workflow to create, produce, and publish 100 plus pieces of content per week. Make sure to check out the video that's coming up on your screen right now. I go in depth on how I break that out, how I use the content pool to repurpose content. So I'll see you there.